Hey there, dreamers. Welcome to National Children's Museum in downtown Washington, D.C. At National Children's Museum, you can explore the world of STEAM. Science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Let's go. Adventure awaits. Hello from National Children's Museum, where we inspire kids just like you to care about and change the world. My name is Langley. Come on in, let me show you around. Good morning, students and educators, and happy National Engineers Week. Welcome to National Children's Museum's first ever live STEAM careers event. I'm Meredith with National Children's Museum in downtown Washington, DC, where as you just saw, you can be a race car engineer, a climate action hero, and a cloud climber all in one day. Our job is to inspire kids just like you to care about and change the world. And your job as students is to dream big. In fact, from now on, I'm gonna call you dreamers. And together, our work is so important because you and your classmates are our future scientists, engineers, and innovators. And although you may not know what you wanna be when you grow up just yet, we want you to know the possibilities in STEAM are endless. So in honor of National Engineers Week, the museum has joined forces with If Then, an initiative of Lie to Hill Philanthropies to bring you today's program, which is being recorded for on-demand viewing in the future. And together, we're going to explore a few of the many career opportunities in the field of engineering by talking to some awesome real life engineers. So dreamers who are joining us today, do you like help? Do you like helping to solve problems? Do you like figuring out how something works? Do you like working on a team? If you said yes to any of these questions, you might love being an engineer. And there are so many different types of engineers. Mechanical engineers design and make products and machines. Think spacecrafts or robots. And civil engineers create roads and bridges. Electrical engineers develop electrical equipment like TVs, radios, your phone, and the list goes on and on and on. In fact, we have a question for you, dreamers. It's time for a poll. Dun, 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 dun. We want to hear from you. So in just a second, you're going to see a question pop up on the screen. I'll read it to you, and then you're going to have 15 seconds to answer. When that time is up, I'll share what today's attendees think and talk about the correct answer. So here's your question. About how many different types of engineers are there? We talked about a few. So how many different types do you think there are? Are there three types of engineers? Are there five types of engineers? Are there seven types of engineers? Are there 15 types of engineers? So you have 15 seconds to respond. And as you're answering, I wanna give a big shout out to the students tuning in from KIPP DC Heights Academy and Noise Elementary School here in Washington, DC. We are so thrilled that you're joining us today. Okay, dreamers, you have five seconds to submit your answer. Ready, five, four, make sure you're submitted in three, two, one. All right, I am going to end the poll and share the results. And would you look at that? About 40% of you thought that fifth, there were 15 types of engineers. And you must have been listening when I said that there are so many types, because that is the correct answer. There are about 15 types of engineers. But what do they all have in common? Engineers usually work in teams to come up with innovative solutions to a wide range of everyday problems. So in addition to having great ideas, engineers test new ideas to make sure that they work. To help us learn more about engineers and what they do in real life, we'll be joined today by two If Then Ambassadors who are engineers themselves. So students, 
please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit questions for our special guests throughout the event. If we have time, we'll be selecting a few questions to address live. So are you ready to get started? Without further ado, I'm so excited to introduce you to our two ambassadors, computer engineer from Virginia, Afua Bruce, and mechanical engineer from California, Katie Kwan. Hi, my name is Afua Bruce. I'm the Chief Program Officer at Datakind. I use technology and data science to improve community and service of humanity. I use a lot of what I learned in school in my day job. I learned in school, obviously, programming uh, techniques, and so I use that a lot in my day job. I also learned in school through a lot of group work, how to work with people and how to work in teams, and really how to take different parts that look very different from each other and make them into one coherent project and one coherent solution. And so I use those tools all the time in my day job now. What's most rewarding to me about my job is when we deliver a solution that actually helps someone. When we're able to take a problem that people thought was too complicated, that people struggled with for a while, and we're able to take a look at the data, come up with some type of computer program or algorithm, and really give back information that lets people do something better. My name is Katie Kwan and I'm a robot choreographer. I started dancing when I was three and I started using the internet when I was nine years old and we had a dial-up connection in my house. And I started to think that technology was gonna be a part of my life in ways that I could have never imagined. When I graduated, I started to work with robots mostly in my artistic work. So I was creating dances for robots, I was using them inside of performances and I thought, I'm really studying how the audience feels about robots. We tend to think of performance as entertainment or we tend to think of performance as you know, only for the arts, but we can learn so much from performance and shows as well. And so for me, it felt like a major achievement to kind of formalize or put a frame and a wrapper around a show and say that this isn't just art, it's also research and the two can benefit one another. If some of my work has a small impact, in a positive way for people beyond myself, then it will feel like I've had a huge success. And here they are, Katie and Afua. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. You both are engineers, but as we just saw, you have two completely different jobs. Uh, so first, we'd love to hear about your individual engineering journeys. Afua, let's begin with you. You are a computer engineer. What does that mean and what do you do each day? Great question. Um, and thank you so much for having me. Um, as a computer engineer, I, as you might imagine, work with computers and electronics. There's hardware, um, the hardware engineering side of computer engineering, which means that you're touching circuit boards and wires and resistors and capacitors and all of those types of things, building the pieces that make computers. And there's software engineering, which is programming or learning to speak in the language of computers. So you can tell computers what to do. You can tell electronics when to turn on, when to turn off, and all of that. So in my day job, I spend more time on the software side, actually working with little bits of data that are just out in the world and seeing how I can take all of that data, all of that information, and turn it into something that helps people's lives. That's incredible. Thank you so much, Afua. Katie, you're a mechanical engineer who works with robots. What does that mean? And how do you also feature dance in your work? Good morning. Hi, everyone. And thanks so much for having me. It's really fun to be here with Afua and Meredith, Cassie, and seeing all of you all. Um, so exciting. So Meredith said this great thing, which is that mechanical engineers build things. So they build things like cars, planes, and robots. And they build them with all different kinds of tools and materials and robots, which are the things that I work with, and you can see Wally, which is a wonderful example of a robot, um, they can be made out of all kinds of things and they can take all different forms. So the robots that I work with tend to look a little bit like human arms. So if you can imagine just an arm by itself, 
either bolted to a table or that moves around on the platform, those are the kinds of robots that I work with. And in order to get those robots to move, just like Afua said, you have to use a computer. So you sit down and you program typically in a certain kind of code, depending on which robots you're using, you sit down and program different behaviors for the robots to do. And then robots are very unique because they can actually reach out and touch the world and they can move through space. So when we think about other people who are experts in getting things to move through space or to reach out and touch the world, that's a type of dance, that's a dance practice. Um, so for me, having been a lifelong dancer and a choreographer, someone who thinks a lot about how to make human beings move around, um, that type of mindset was really valuable when I came to robotics, because in robotics, you're thinking a lot about how to make robots move around. So it's that type of motion and that motion through the environment that really brings robots and dance together. That's incredible. Both of your jobs seem so exciting. Thank you for answering that. So my second question for you both is, did you always know that you wanted to be an engineer? And Katie, let's have you respond first this time. I didn't even know what engineer meant uh, when I was <laughs> your guys' age. So you're learning a lot pretty quickly. Um, and so I didn't know what engineer was. I didn't know that it was a word or a job or that there were many different kinds. So I can't say that growing up, I knew I wanted to be an engineer, but I knew growing up that I had a really big passion for the internet and being able to connect with people all over the world from my house. And that felt like a completely brand new way of meeting and talking and communicating with other people, not just talking because we had phones back then, but also being able to chat and share information. Um, so I can't say that I knew in initially I wanted to be an engineer, but for sure I was really fascinated by technology. I think. I knew I wanted to be a dancer. And so I'm really glad that I still get to do that in, in some way with my current work. Yeah, the ability to be able to merge some of those passions together um, is really important. Um, that's incredible. Afua, how about you? Did you always know that you wanted to be an engineer? I, um, growing up, knew that I wanted to be an engineer. I also knew at different points that I wanted to be a teacher, a dancer, a tennis player, a marine biologist, an anesthesiologist, I think a doctor at one point. I wanted to be a lot of different things. Um, and so at one point, I did want to be an engineer, and it came back around when I was like, going to college and picking a major and when I chose computer engineering. But what I think that I always did know was that I really liked building things. I really liked electronics. I loved um, different electronic toys. I really liked um, my math and science classes. Most times there were definitely a few classes that I took that were really difficult and made me wonder, can I actually do this? Is this actually for me? Um, and I realized I just had to keep trying at it or maybe try a different science class, maybe biology instead of chemistry, for example. Um, and so I ended up by the time I was in, uh, at the end of my high school career, knowing that I did want to be an engineer. And I'm super glad that I made that choice. That's wonderful. So dreamers, as you can hear, you may or may not know that engineering is a pathway that uh, you're interested in at this point, but it's important to continue thinking and dreaming big about what you enjoy doing. And uh, that can translate later into uh, a career choice like engineering. So let's take a question that was submitted to us from our friends at Sunrise Elementary School all the way in Redmond, Washington. So they ask, what skills are most important to gain during school years if interested in careers in engineering? And that's a great question. So Afua, can we start with you on that one? Afua, unfortunately, I think we're having a little trouble hearing you. Hmm. There we go. You're back. All right. I'm back. All right. Excellent. Sorry about that. Um, technical difficulties happen even to uh, computer engineers. Um, and so I think the question was what, uh, what you need to be studying in school uh, in order to be an engineer. So I mentioned math and science. That's always really important. 
um, to, to study, but also figure out the types of math and the types of science that you really like. You don't have to know everything to be an engineer. It's also really important though to um, take classes or just figure out how to work well with people. Engineers don't work alone and by themselves in a, in a basement somewhere like it's sometimes uh, portrayed in television shows, but engineers work with teams of people. So uh, the things that you do, sports or other team projects that you have, really making sure that you invest in how you build relationships and learn how to work really well with people. That's really important too. Thank you. Katie, how about you? This is a great question. Um, so the world is always changing and engineering is always changing, regardless of what kind of engineering you're engaged in. Um, there are smartphones didn't exist when I was a kid, for example, and uh, whole different types of jobs have cropped up just about smartphones, about making apps for smartphones and measuring different parts of the environment by using your smartphone and the camera on your smartphone. So what I would say is that one of the biggest skills is just to have a passion for learning and be excited about learning new things because everything is going to change, you know, as time moves forward. And so being open and adaptable to the different kinds of skills that might come up in the future. But I also want to agree with Apua, you know, math and science, some of those fundamental geometry and algebra, those classes, I use a lot of that in my everyday work. Um, especially in mechanical engineering, you can take classes that show you how to assemble and design different things. Um, we call that prototyping um, in engineering, and you can design things at your house. Um, maybe you have a backyard and you realize that there's a lot of boxes or something coming in, you need to design a fence for it. Um, that would be an example of a certain kind of mechanical engineering. So designing, creating things from scratch, building, assembling them together, whether it's toys or IKEA furniture or whatever, um, those are all different types of ways that you can start to feel passionate about engineering and especially building engineering skills. But I also definitely want to agree with what Afua said in terms of teams. So one thing we always say about robotics is that robotics is a team sport. It is so hard to build a robot by yourself. It's so hard to build a robot with a lot of other people <laughs> that, that uh, we need to be able to work with each other as well as we can. And so communication, listening, being able to write and describe your work, um, all of those English classes, they're gonna be really important to your future success in terms of working together in teams and, and pursuing whatever your passions are, whether it's engineering or something else. That's incredible. So students, did you hear that from both Afua and Katie? Definitely make sure you're focusing on math and computer and science classes, but not just those. There are other skills uh, like your verbal communication, making sure that you're working productively in teams that will be helpful for you as you think about careers in engineering. So if you focus on those things, then we're going to be able to do all of the cool things that both Afua and Katie are doing on a daily basis. So it looks like we do have um, some time for a few questions that you've submitted through the event streamers. Um, and I'm heading into the Q&A right now and see, wow, some really awesome and interesting questions. And I think the first one that I'm going to have uh, the team answer is from Chloe. This is a great question. Um, they ask, did you ever have a moment when you wanted to give up? I think that's a great question. Um, Afua, can we have you answer first? Sure. I have had several moments actually where I wanted to give up. Um, I think one of the things that um, maybe isn't talked about enough is that figuring out problems can sometimes be really hard. You might have to try something not just once or twice, but 20 or 30 times. And so if you're trying something 30 times to figure out the right way to get it done, by, you know, time 10 or 15. Afua, unfortunately, I think your, uh, your mic went out again um, partway through. Perhaps we can get you to come back. Oh, no. There we go. There oh, okay. We go. You're back. All right. I'll make my answer really uh, short then. Um, it can be when you get to time 10 or 15, it can be discouraging and you wonder, you know, should you keep going? And 
that's part of the beauty of engineering is pushing through those times where it gets really frustrating, where you might want to quit and you might want to give up, but then, you know, keep trying and eventually, hopefully you'll find that solution. And then it feels really fun. Super great advice to just keep going. It's difficult, um, but rewarding at the end. So thank you, Afua. Katie, do you have anything to add to that? I think so. I think failure, one thing we talk about with failure in um, both my lab group and also the different engineering communities I'm a part of is it's just part of the process, right? There's a really great, I think it's a quote from Thomas Edison, which is you sort of just keep, the expectation is that you'll fail and you sort of just keep failing <laughs> until at some point something starts to work. Um, and I really do think that's true, that failure is just a part of the process because you learn a lot when something doesn't work, I think is the biggest thing that I'll, I'll underscore here, which is when you build a robot, for example, and let's say that the robot is supposed to be able to see around corners right. and it doesn't do that you learn a lot about, do I need to change my design? Do I need to change the program that I've written for the robot? Do I have to change the camera? Do I need to direct it in a different way? And so all of those times that you fail, and as Afua said, it gets really, really hard and you can be really frustrated sometimes and feel like, oh my goodness, what am I doing wrong that this isn't working? Um, but that's just a big part of the process. And so what I would also add to her wonderful answer is that uh, you learn a lot when you fail. Um, for example, you know, probably to relate to some of your own experience, sometimes if you take a test, you don't get all the questions right, but the ones that you get wrong, you learn a lot about why you got those ones wrong. So I think failure is just a part of the engineering process. It's something we learn from and it's something that we get better at over time for sure. But it, I've, you could probably ask any engineer of any age if they've failed in the last year and they will tell you yes. Thank you so much. So it's to both of you for sharing that. It sounds like what I'm hearing is failure is actually your friend. Uh, it's that seems like a difficult, I know I struggle with failure, but it sounds like that's an important part of the process. So keep continuing to try, continuing to retest is an important part of engineering. Um, so thank you both for sharing uh, that with us. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, so we have another question from Michelle um, that I would like for you both to answer. Do you have people that inspired you to uh, persevere through the tough times? So as an add on to that question, um, was there anybody in particular who inspired you? Katie, why don't you go first? Yes, so I, Every time I feel really, really, really frustrated, <laughs> which is a lot, um, I call my fiance, who's a wonderful person in my life, um, sometimes known as a boyfriend. Uh, fancy, fiance is a fancy word for boyfriend. Um, I also call my parents a lot and I sort of tell them about what I'm going through and how I'm feeling and, and they'll really inspire me and pick me up and help me feel like I can keep moving forward. But I also had a number of really wonderful teachers. Miss um, Jackie Miller, who was my fourth grade teacher, she really provided a bunch of different kinds of projects where we could go out in the world and learn from the environment and then bring it back into the classroom. And so sometimes when I'm thinking about giving up or I'm having a really tough time, I actually go back and think about some people in my past, like some of my teachers who have inspired me and made me feel like I could persevere and keep moving forward. And so even though I don't talk to them all the time, um, those memories and those people like Jackie Miller and Miss Brill, who's my seventh grade science teacher, I think about them and I think that I try to channel some of their energy and their spirit um, because they were always so encouraging and, and encouraged me to uh, really try to pursue my passion. So I'd say I've got my family, my friends, um, some of my teachers that continue to inspire me. And then as an engineer at a university, um, I'm surrounded by all these en other engineers all the time. So other students, other graduate students, um, my advisor who is a mechanical engineer and followed a very similar path that I'm now following. Um, and so I really look to people in my community that will inspire me to persevere. So I'll provide one quick example, which was 
last week, I was really stuck on something and I wasn't sure how to move forward. And I reached out to some of the other students in my lab and immediately everyone started saying, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you tried this? And so I think the three big things I would mention is like my family, my fiance, my friends, some of these wonderful teachers that I've had in my past who've inspired me. And then the big community that I'm surrounded by at Stanford, which is a bunch of other students, my advisor, other engineers, and people who I can really learn from on a regular basis. Thanks, Katie. That's wonderful. Afua, how about you? Yeah, I definitely use, um, you know, my friends, my family when I'm feeling frustrated and, you know, need a little bit of inspiration or pick me up. But I also really appreciate the ability to find stories about other people who have um, persevered through challenges and become engineers or become scientists or become mathematicians. Um, and so reading the stories and reading books about um, people like Mae Jemison, who's an astronaut, or Bessie Blount Griffin, who made a number of inter um, inventions, or even Garrett Morgan, and just a number of talented people who have had to persevere through a lot of challenges in their life and a lot of challenges in the engineering process, um, both technically, as well as to get in the right classes, to get in the right organizations, and to get their in, um, inventions or their talents recognized and um, seen by the world. I take a lot of inspiration from those stories as well. Thank you. Dreamers, it sounds like from both Katie and Afua, there are so many places that you can draw inspiration and support from, be that your friends, your family, your other classmates, your amazing educators and teachers who are on here today, and then stories of those who have uh, done the same or persevered through as well, whether or not they're in engineering or students themselves. Um, those stories can also be incredibly inspiring to us as we work through the, the challenges that we know will happen each day. So students, thank you so much for submitting those amazing questions, but we still want to hear from you. So dun, 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 it is time for your final poll. We want to hear from you. So our second question for the day is coming up. And the question asks, which engineer enjoys putting things in motion and is involved in designing, building, testing, and controlling machines that fly inside Earth's atmosphere, including airplanes and jets? Okay, so engineers that put things in motion and make things fly. Is it civil, aerospace, chemical, or software. So you've got another 15 seconds to respond, streamers. And as you're answering, I would just want to give a big shout out to students from Neil Dow Elementary School in California and SEC PTA in Ohio who are joining us today. We're so happy to be celebrating National Engineers Week with you and with everybody who joined the session today. All right, dreamers, you've got five seconds left. Five, four, submit in three, two, one, I'm going to end the poll and share the results and look at that. 58% of you said aerospace engineers are the ones that enjoy putting things in motion and making things fly. And that's absolutely correct. The way that I know about it is because that word aero sounds a lot like air or airspace. So it's a great prefix that helped me out. Way to use your context clues, dreamers. That's wonderful. So we have one final question for you, Katie and Afua. Uh, National Children's Museum's mission is to inspire children to care about and change the world. So how do you as an engineer change the world? Afua, can we hear from you first? Yeah, I'm actually really lucky in that I feel like I get to change the world every day. The projects that I and my team work on, we find nonprofit organizations, which are organizations that are really focused on what needs are there in my community and how do we help use technology to meet those needs. And so I've gotten to work on projects where people uh, look at improving water quality, where people look at delivering medicine more quickly and efficiently, where people look at making sure uh, as many people as possible Possible can actually graduate from college in the fields they want to study to get the jobs they want to get. And so I, again, feel really lucky in that I've been able to use, you know, my engineering skills, my data skills to really help with all of these needs that people have. 
That's incredible. So Afua's passion for helping people is also part of her work. So she's finding places to use technology um, and also uh, the skills that she enjoys in her everyday life. So thank you, Afua. You certainly are changing the world and we thank you for that. Katie, share with us, how do you as an engineer change the world? We're in such a cool time right now because robots for the last several decades have been inside of factories and spaces where they're really far away from people. And right now we are a part of this new era of robotics where they're coming out of the factory and they're going to be more and more a part of our daily lives. So some of you all may have seen robots in your grocery stores. They're coming to offices, hospitals. Maybe some, maybe homes that's a little, little ways away from now, but definitely on the street. And so we're part of a different era, a new revolution in robotics where they're moving from the factory into some of these different types of spaces. And that means that robots are doing all kinds of different things that they hadn't done, um, done before. So they're exploring new territories. If there's an earthquake or a big storm and it's hard for people to explore the rubble and wreckage, robots are doing that. Robots are helping people who might not be able to stand up, for example, a lot of different groups like the elderly or people who are visually impaired, helping them move around. Um, robots can clean solar panels, they can um, pick up trash from oceans. They're starting to do all different kinds of things which they hadn't we hadn't necessarily expected robots to do. And so in my work, um, I think a lot about how we can program and design robots so that all different kinds of people can use those robots. People like my parents, my grandparents, people who might not necessarily know how to program a computer, but we can create something for them that allows them to very easily and quickly control a robot. Um, so for me, I feel like my work is changing the world because it's making robotics accessible to a lot of different kinds of people and allowing them to feel empowered when they use those different kinds of robots uh, because that's really how robots are changing in our everyday lives and you know allowing us to do things we never imagined so i feel very even though things get hard sometimes and you know in progress will be incremental i've got to keep that long-term goal in mind and remember that it's not it's not about me it's about helping everyone else that i can help with these tools Thank you, Katie. We are truly at an amazing time and we thank you for sharing uh, your talents and your time with us as well. You are making such an impact on the world. Thank you. And what's even cooler, Dreamers, is that anyone can think and build like an engineer like Afua and Katie. So as we wrap up this event, I have a challenge for you to put some of these skills and ideas to the test. We want you to design and build an at-home zip line, and it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is visit our website on the screen to learn how you can engineer a zip line using materials that you probably already have at home. So you can experiment with different materials and use the skills that Katie and Afua mentioned today, like problem solving, uh, trying again, uh, so that you can figure out what works best. And we would love to see the amazing creations that we know you're going to build. So with permission from your adult sidekick, take a picture or a video of your zip line and share it with us by tagging us on social media or by sending us an email. We will share these ways to be in touch with your educators in case you'd like to participate so you can find more engineering challenges in this teamwork video collection on our website so that you can become an everyday engineer. So Katie and Afua, we're so pleased that you're here. I know that Afua was having a few technical uh, difficulties and so she uh, had to pop off, um, but hopefully she might be able to come back on, but we're so appreciative of her um, sharing with us today. But Katie, if you have any parting advice to share with these young innovators um, as a final goodbye. So we've talked about there's some tough times when it comes to engineering, but also engineering is so much fun. And so that would be my big takeaway for today, which is that there are so many fun emotions and memories that you get to have when you build something that moves around, that can be driven. And so I'll really leave you all with the final parting thought that engineering is really, really fun. It can be totally challenging at times, but it is so much fun. And uh, it's one of those fields where you really get to practice and reach out and do um, 
apply basically lots of the things that you learn in school into real world objects. So um, maybe as you as you think about what do engineers do, you could say, oh, they have all these different skills. It can be really challenging, but also engineering is a whole lot of fun. Thank you, Katie. That's fantastic advice. Engineering is fun. And we thank you for sharing that with us today. It's clear that your work is fun. Uh, being a robot choreographer sounds amazing. And Afua's work as well to be able to combine um, computer engineering with data and helping communities is incredible. So thank you. Students, we hope that you will join us next week on Thursday, March 4th at 4 p.m. to explore career opportunities in the fight against climate change during another of our STEAM Career Live events. So you'll have your adult sign kick, a sidekick sign up for that in order to attend, and that's on our website. And we'll also send that information to your teachers as well. But that is all for today. Thank you to our guests, to our real life engineers, Katie and Afua, for answering all of our questions. Special thanks to If Then and Initiative of Lie to Help Philanthropies for generously funding today's program. And lastly, and most importantly, thank you to our viewers, to our budding engineers and their educators. We have had so much fun exploring careers in engineering with you. And until next time, dreamers, stay curious.